Shrouded in snow and buffeted by piercing winds, high amongst the shiver peaks is a great settlement. Amongst the rocky spires, the towering fir trees and swaying snow cherry are giant lodges, wide walkways and torches topped with crackling fires. This is a city of Norn, a warm haven in the freezing mountains. Holbrack began as a hunting lodge, established by Asgeir Dragonrender around 1169 AE. Only four years previously, the elder dragon Jormag awoke, plunging the far shiver peaks into a snowstorm. This snowstorm was unrelenting, endangering the lives of many of the creatures that lived there, and the dragon's forces, corrupted and cruel, were massacring anyone who did not submit to the dragon. With the aid of the spirits of the wild, Asgeir managed to unite the Norn and lead them south to safety. Over the years, the Norn flourished, and a vast encampment sprang up around the lodge, growing into the city we see today. Holbrack is overseen by Newt White Bear, Dragonrender's grandson. White Bear acts as a defender of Holbrack and the Norn who live there. His sons, Sigfast and Skarti, head the Wolfborn, a group of Norn who carry out peacekeeping within the settlement and surrounding areas. Although White Bear is a greatly respected Norn, he is not a leader of the Norn in the same way that the Pale Tree guides Silvari or Queen Jenna rules the humans. Norn do not have such a centralised governance. They are a highly individualistic race and focus on personal success and glory. They tend to govern themselves according to their conscience and bow to no one. Nevertheless, White Bear gives the final word on many of the day-to-day -day events of Holbrack from the prices that the traders set on their goods to whether a citizen is exiled or banished. Norn live in homesteads such as these in the Frost Basin, or under the roofs of the lodges that stand around the centre of the settlement. Made from wood and metal, they are imposing in their size, dominating the skyline. The largest of these lodges is the Great Lodge, resident of White Bear and many other Norn. On the lowermost level of the Great Lodge is an enormous tooth, suspended from the ceiling by gigantic chains. The fang belonged to Jormag, hewn from its jaw by Dragonrender during a battle with the dragon. It hangs as a reminder of the horrors inflicted by Jormag on the race of Norn, as well as a testament to the Norn's strength in the face of destruction. Dragonrender was the only Norn known to face Jormag and survive. Young Norn test their metal against the tooth. It is believed that if one manages to damage it, the Norn have a chance of killing the dragon itself. Each of the remaining four lodges are dedicated to a spirit of the wild. These lodges house Norn, but also serve as meeting places for those seeking guidance from the spirits. Each lodge has a fire at its heart, and the lofty ceilings are hung with tapestries and banners and bells that ring as the wind blows over them. Here in Bear Lodge is an opening leading into a cave. This is Shelter Rock, a gathering area for Norn. In the cool, dim cave system are homesteads and open spaces for citizens to gather, feast and rest. On the eastern side of the cave is a graveyard. Tended by Injun Grimsdotter, the bones laid to rest here are from Norn and outsiders. Anyone who chooses burial over traditional Norn pyre are laid to rest under Khans and watched over by a visage of bear. There are also graves here for beloved pets, as well as memorials for Norn whose bodies have never been recovered. There are more spirits of the wild than wolf, bear, raven and snow leopard. Eagle, wolverine, owl and ox, who is sometimes known as Doliak, are honoured in the Hall of Legends. Lost Spirits Hallow stands with shrines for each of these spirits. Eagle does not have a carved totem but he is still honoured with prayers by the Norn who visit here. Although they are not given the same weight as the four main protectors of the Norn, without their sacrifice, the exodus from the lands of Jormag may have cost the lives of many more. In the open centre between the lodges, known as Might and Main, is a great lantern. The roaring fire is encased in slabs of thick, clear ice. Each side of the lantern is carved with the face of one of the spirits of the wild, as well as the fang of Jormag, and the firelight projects their visages onto the clouds. Encircling the lanterns are shrines, and none seeking to petition with the spirits can do so here. 
It is also a place for non-Zagana information about the world outside of Holrak. Eger Teslo gathers stories from far and wide, ensuring the curious are always informed about many things, from the politics of the humans to the warfare of the Char. Alongside the Great Lodge is the trading and crafting hub of Holbrack. Divided into two levels, the crafting stations are connected to the marketplace above by wide walkways. The Norn are renowned for their excellent craftsmanship, and the crafters here are no exception. Of note are the towering looms standing in rows. Norn weave intricate and detailed tapestry, carpets and cloth, dyeing each strand of woven fibre in an array of striking colours. The wool likely comes from such animals as the Doliak or mountain sheep. It has excellent insulation properties, and the natural presence of lanolin amongst the fibres helps the Norns to repel the snow and water of their homeland with ease. Also here are the vast tables covered with animal hides and furs. Norn hunters aim to use every last piece of animal they kill for food, tools or clothing. Many a Norn can be seen wearing clothing fashioned from these hides. There is a great cooking station, stocked with fantastic meats, vegetables, fruits and piles of spices. Norn culture features feasting together at its heart, and the sheer volume of food available here reflects this. On the marketplace above, merchants sell wares from carts, hanging fish and meat out on display. The entire open area is filled with great tables and interspersed with large kegs, and Norn and visitors gather to socialise, network, even conduct business within the city bank and Black Lion trading post. Norn portray their spirits of the wild in ice, wood and stone, but they are not the only figures immortalised in sculpture. Here in Stonewright's setting, Esther Gulkin has carved statues of other heroes of legend. Amongst them is the iconic Norn Jora. Renowned for her feats in battling dragon corruption, Jora fought against the Great Destroyer, and even killed her own brother after he was seduced by Jormag's promise of strength, prey and glory. Jora, recognising her brother was beyond salvation, slew the ferocious Norn bear he had become. Because of Jora's legend, the current sons of Svarne scorn women, and refuse to accept them into the fold. She is so prominent in Norn history that her statues are found all across the Shiver Peaks from the shores of Lake Morn to the caves of Bitterfrost Frontier. Norn remember great heroes of old through statues, but also share the feats of their peers and ancestors through stories and songs. Skalds compose epic poems and music of heroic warriors and other important figures, and through these the history of the Norn is passed down through the generations. The Norn usually share such stories and songs during their moots, celebrations and parties where they gather to feast and drink but the Norn do not need many excuses to hold a party. The taverns, such as Master Blackforge Steading in Shelter Rock, or the beer garden on the shore of Lake Morn, are always busy. Here the brewers of Courage Brewery trade hearty beers and rich meads, and revellers drink well into the night and early morning. The most popular beer here may well be Bear's Brown Ale, a brew discovered by Brothhander Halfmad. His statue can be found in Stonewright Steading, and it is said his brew was the result of over 94 failed attempts. Lake Morn is testament to the tenacity of Norn, like no other landmark in the city. During Holbrat's early days, this part of the Shiver Peaks was rent by a great glacier. Encroaching on the lodge, it threatened to crush the settlement. Hrothbeer, a Norn living there at the time, took up arms and strode to meet the glacier as it carved through the mountainside. He chipped away at the ice without a single moment of rest and as the glacier dissipated, the lake was formed. Hrothbeer's rest is a small island in the lake overlooking the ice, and framed in beautiful cherry blossom. It is said this is where the tireless Norn stopped, and looked out over his work once he had secured Holbrack's safety. Now the ever-frozen lake is a place where Norn can gather for fun, testing their coordination and physical strength. And on the snowy shoreline, great white bears gather, living in harmony with the Norn and raising their young. In the mountainside by Lake Morn is another cave. The veins of the dragon is used by the sons of Svarne, by permission of White Bear. The sons revere the elder dragon Jormag, believing them to be stronger and more worthy of worship than the spirits of the wild. The sons live in this cave, watched closely by the wolfborn, tolerated as long as they do not commit any crimes. Because of Jormag's influence, great spires of corrupted ice stretch upwards towards the ceiling, 
and the chill in the air is unsettling and eerie. Norn culture does not punish a group based on the deeds of one. Unless a son causes trouble, he is not considered a criminal, and is free to choose his lifestyle as much as any other Norn. To a member of another race this may seem strange, like a member of the Nightmare Corps being allowed to live amongst the roots of the Pale Tree. But to the Norn, only the individual can make decisions about their conduct, and must be free to live out these choices and all their consequences. Holbrook is ultimately a haven, sheltered amongst the mountains, safe and warm. Travellers are welcomed here, Norn are welcomed here, anyone with a story to tell or heroic deeds to celebrate. Watched over by the spirits, the wolfborn and white bear, it is a settlement that has stood the test of time and will no doubt endure for ages to come. <laughs>